guys, how's it going? I had some extra time today and I was messing around with version 6 of the Fractal Audio Systems AxeFX2 firmware. Um, for those of you that don't know, this is the unit I use for everything on solo a week and live um, and on recordings, etc. And they just released a new update for it and in that update is a feature I think a lot of people are really excited about. Um, and I've been messing with it a little bit. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. It's called tone matching. Basically it allows you to get a tone that's pretty close using an existing amp model on the AxeFX uh, and then play a song with an isolated guitar track into the AxeFX and then hit a couple buttons and it'll copy that tone exactly. Uh, it's really kind of scary how close it gets. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do to do a tone match is pull up a preset or make your own preset that sounds something like the tone that you want to match. So you want to get a preset that has um, the, a similar kind of amp type and a similar gain structure. You want to have as much gain as it has or as little gain as it has. Um, and then you're actually going to go in and replace the cabinet block with the tone match block. So let's take a look. For this video, I'm going to be matching the intro solo from The Count of Tuscany, uh, which is a Dream Theater song. So I've pulled up the USA Lead preset, which is based on a Mesa Boogie Mark IV, um, USA Lead II, which is the amplifier that John Petrucci uses most of the time. Um, so it's going to be a fairly good approximation of what the final tone should sound like. So if we go into the layout mode here, what we see is that my guitar is coming into the AxeFX and it's going through all these bypass things. It's going into the amplifier. Um, which as you see is USA Lead 2 and I'm not going to change anything really um, so we're going to go in and I'm going to turn on the drive pedal uh, since this is a lead I want a little more gain and so it, it's, it sounds like this <laughs> Alright, so it sounds pretty good. I mean, it's a great tone. Uh, it's something I'd be happy to use right off the bat. But we want to get really, really close with the tone match, and that's the whole point here. So what I'm going to do is actually go in and change this cabinet block to, hello, to a tone match block. Uh, and I'm going to bypass this right now. So what this is basically doing is taking out the cabinet, and the tone match, once we do it, is going to become our cabinet. Um, so this sounds really... Um, kind of gritty without a cabinet in there. I don't think a lot of people realize, but that's what an amplifier actually sounds like without a cabinet. It's pretty amazing how much a cabinet actually contributes um, to the sound of an amplifier. A lot of the times when people talk about, you know, that amp sounds so sweet or whatever, what they're actually talking about is the cabinet, because this is a pretty, it's a pretty weird tone. And that's, you know, it's a great sounding tone once you throw a cabinet in there. Alright, so we're going to go into the tone match block here, and as you can see, there's a reference screen and a local screen. And basically what that means is reference is the tone we're going to be playing into the AxeFX, and local is the screen that's going to capture the impulse of what I'm actually playing with my guitar. Okay, so I'm going to scroll over to the process screen right here, and we're not going to really mess with any of this except for this first thing we want to change reference source to USB. And I'm going to explain why in a minute. But that needs to be on USB because we're going to play a song from our computer into the AxeFX. All right, now let's go to the computer and see how we're going to play it in. Okay, so there are two ways really uh, that make sense to send a signal from your computer to the AxeFX via USB. So I've done the first one, which is you pull up a program like Reaper um, or Audacity or whatever you use, um, set the AxeFX as your audio device. So in Reaper, you go to Options and then Preferences. And under Device, you select ASIO, uh, and then you go to the AxeFX right here. Um, basically, what that's doing is it's making the AxeFX my uh, sound card, basically. So then the audio is going to go through the AxeFX and out. So by selecting, as we did before, the reference signal USB on the process page of the tone match block, we've effectively set it so that the AxeFX is listening to whatever's being fed through it on USB. So if I play this uh, guitar solo here... That's what the AxeFX is going to listen to, to tone match. Okay, the other way that we can do it is to actually, on Windows 7, since that's what I'm using, go down to the little speaker on the bottom right hand corner, as you can see right here. Um, right click that, go to playback devices, and you can change your default audio device from your computer speakers to the AxeFX up here by just right clicking and saying uh, set as default. 
Okay, so basically that allows you to just play something through iTunes or Windows Media Player or any other program that you'd be using um, and it'll actually feed the sound out through the axe effects um, as opposed to putting it in something like Reaper. So either one works and either one is going to work uh, with the USB selection on the process page. Okay, so now that we've set up the USB out on our computer and we've selected USB on the reference source here on the process page, what we're going to do is we're going to just start playing the original track that we're trying to copy. And I'm going to start it first so there's no blank spot on the capture. So what I'm going to do is start it and then I'm going to hit X on the Axe Effects so that it starts. So watch and it's going to capture here. <laughs> Okay, so if you notice, I actually hit X and stopped the capturing of the reference signal before I stopped the audio on my computer, and that's so there wasn't any blank space at the end. It's the same reason I started it after I started the audio, just so there's no blank space at the beginning. Okay, so we now have our reference capture here, and what we want to do is get our local capture, which is the sound of the guitar, straight into the tone match block through the amp. Okay, so... I'm going to start playing the guitar before I hit Y, just so I can start capturing uh, with no blank space, and then I'll stop it after. So, here it goes. Alright, so we've captured the local impulse here. Now what I'm going to do is hit enter, as it says, enter to match. And as you can see, the block is bypassed, so I'm going to unbypass it. So I'll throw on some delay here, go to layout, go over to delay, unbypass that, and we've got this. <laughs> So for comparison, here's the original. And here's me. Alright, so there you have it. That's how tone matching works, and I hope this tutorial has helped you guys uh, to see what the steps are involved. Uh, as long as this video is, I think it's approaching six minutes at this point, uh, tone matching is actually really easy, and as you can hear, it is dead on. Uh, it really does a great job of copying the tones. Um, once you kind of go through the steps once, tone matching really only takes five or ten seconds to do. You play two, two or three seconds of your reference, two or three seconds of your guitar, hit enter, uh, and unbypass the block, uh, and you're ready to go. You can share the presets with the tone match block in there. Just save the preset out and X edit. Um, and then you can post them online and share them. I've actually posted this one. You can go to the Fractal Audio XFX forum and check it out. Um, and to store the preset once you're done, obviously you just hit store on the XFX and then enter twice and you're ready to go. Take care.